Hello everyone, welcome to this video. So today we will be learning everything about lambda expressions. What are lambda expressions, how to write them, how to derive them, in what context they can be used and also what are some rules which revolve around using lambda expressions. So let's quickly get started. So lambda expressions are basically functions or methods. So we can consider lambda expressions as methods which do not have any name. So they are anonymous and also they are not associated with any one particular class. So we can consider lambda expressions as anonymous functions and they also can be passed around as parameters. So they are anonymous functions which we can pass around as parameters. Okay, So that is lambda expressions. Let us quickly see what is the basic syntax of a lambda expression. So lambda expression can be expressed in two ways. One is the parameters, the arrow mark and then the expression. And the other way is parameters, the arrow mark and a block of statements. So quickly let us see the examples of some of the lambda expressions. So if the first one if you see s is of type string the arrow and then we are returning the length of that string. So here it is returning an integer. Okay and the next one if you see a is of type apple which is an object so we can even pass objects as parameters to, an, to a lambda expression the arrow mark and then we are just comparing the weight. So this is returning a boolean. So these two are the expression form of writing a lambda expression. Now the third one if we see we are passing two integer parameters the arrow and then we have written a block of statements right. So here we are just consuming the input and doing some operation. So here the return is void we are not returning anything and also the if we cannot pass any parameters okay no parameters being passed the right arrow mark and here 42. Here we are it is returning the integer as output. Okay, So these are some examples in which we can write the lambda expressions. So let us quickly uh, have a quiz and I will show you some questions and you can pause the video here and identify which is a valid lambda expression which and which is not a valid lambda expression. So now let us see the expressions one by one. So the first one we are not passing any parameter and we are not returning anything and it look it is a valid lambda expression. The second one it is empty parameters the arrow and then we are just returning some string this is also a valid lambda expression. The third one is also empty parameters and then we have written a block of statements and we are returning a string this is also a valid lambda expression. The fourth one we are passing integer and we are returning a string but we are returning uh, we are not returning in the block of statements we are returning as an expression but return can only be used uh, in uh, like return is a control flow uh, keyword so we can only use it in the block of code so this is not a valid lambda expression to make it valid we just need to we need to have this return as a block of statements okay and uh, the fifth one string s this is well and good and we are we have written the block of statements and we think that we are trying to return a string but this is not valid so if you are just returning a string you can write it in the form of expression directly the string okay or you need to write the return keyword okay whatever is the string so either of these two a would have been valid but this is an invalid lambda expression here are some examples of lambda expression okay this is a boolean expression it is it would return some boolean value we can also create objects consume from an object okay we this apple we are just printing it we can uh, select or extract from an object, we are extracting the length, we can combine two values or we can even compare two objects. Okay, there are many things which we can do with lambda expressions. So uh, that is well and good 
to write a lambda expression but in what context can lambda expressions be used or oh, the valid scenarios where we can use the lambda expressions so uh, lambda expressions can be used only and only in the context of a functional interface so what are these functional interfaces so functional interfaces are those interfaces which have just one abstract method exactly one abstract method they cannot have more than one abstract method and they cannot have uh, zero abstract methods they need to have exactly one abstract method and they can have many default methods so as i mentioned lambda expressions can be used only in the context of functional interface and what is a functional interface that specifies this is very important exactly one abstract method and a lambda expression is nothing but it is the concrete implementation of that uh, one abstract method of that functional interface okay so a lambda expression whatever we write we are just giving the implementation of that abstract method which is there in the functional interface directly lambda expressions let you provide the implementation of the abstract method of a functional interface directly in line and treat the whole expression as an instance of a functional interface so how do we derive these lambda expressions so there is a term called function descriptor so whatever is the input parameter of that one abstract method and whatever is the return type of that abstract method that is nothing but the function descriptor of that uh, lambda expression whatever we write for it okay the input parameters and the return type of the abstract method of functional interface becomes the function descriptor by which we can write the lambda expression okay it is the signature of the abstract method of functional interface which is essentially describe the signature of the lambda expressions so basically abstract methods are called as the function descriptors and uh, functional interfaces uh, they can be either annotated with at the rate functional interface annotation or uh, the uh, annotation is not needed but it's good to have the annotation so that uh, we are uh, we know that this is a functional interface and it should have just one abstract method so let us see some functional interfaces which are already existing in java so we have comparator which has uh, uh, which has an abstract method compare which take two uh, objects of type t and it returns an integer then we have the runnable which does not take any parameter and it does not return anything and we have this action listener that takes input parameter as an action event and it returns a void uh, so callable callable has a call method which does not take any parameter and returns type v which is the callable uh, type which we have created and then the privileged action also it does not take any parameters and ret returns a type t so basically if we try to write the function descriptor okay so for runnable no parameters arrow and void return okay so this would become the function descriptor with the help of which we can derive the lambda expression and if you see for uh, the compare method okay so two objects object 1 object 2 and then it should return some integer so this becomes the function descriptor for the lambda expression so in this way we can uh, know the function descriptor that will help us to write the lambda expression so now let us quickly see some uh, examples of functional interface and pause the video here and identify which is a valid functional interface and which is not a valid functional interface so the first one adder it has one abstract method add which is taking two integers and returning one int so it's a descriptor if we try to write it becomes this okay and this is having just one abstract method so this is a valid functional interface now if we see smart adder that is extending adder and it has added another uh, abstract method so now smart adder has this one and the inherited uh, second abstract method so it is having more than one abstract method so this is not a valid functional interface how about this it does not have any abstract method defined at all so this is also not a valid functional interface so for 
an interface to be a functional interface it should have exactly one abstract method so we have seen lambda expressions we have seen functional interfaces now let us uh, combine these two and identify out of these questions uh, which is a valid uh, lambda expression okay pause the video here and try to identify which are valid and which are not valid lambda expressions so if we see the first one we have written this lambda expression okay and it is for runnable so runnable as we have seen already it takes empty and returns void right so this is a valid lambda expression the second one if you see we are trying to uh, write the lambda expression for a callable okay we are trying to give the implementation for a callable functional interface and callable has a call method uh, that takes empty parameters and returns some type v with uh, which is the object of the callable which we need okay so here it is empty parameters and then we are returning string okay so yeah this is a valid lambda expression the third one if you see there is a predicate so we are trying to write the lambda expression for a predicate here so now predicate has a method test that takes some object as input and uh, it returns boolean as the return type so its function descriptor would be some object of that uh, which is of type of that predicate the arrow and then uh, some uh, expression or block of statements that returns a boolean so now let us see this lambda expression so we have the object a here and then we are just doing a dot get weight this is not a boolean expression okay so this is not a valid use of lambda expression so uh, how to identify where we can uh, use the lambda expression how to identify if we can write our own functional interface and write lambda expressions around it so suppose if we have some code wherein we have some uh, initialization code and some finishing up code which is common but there is just some part of code uh, which can change behavior according to the requirements so this is nothing but the behavior parameterization right so some common block of uh, code at the beginning at the end and then uh, we are doing some work which we want to change with as per the requirement so that is nothing but we we call it an execute around pattern so let us see now how we can uh, you know use these lambda expressions for execute around pattern okay so as i have mentioned so we might have some code which is having some preparation code and finishing up code which is common so it is only this uh, some task which might change so this these scenarios would be valid to write the lambda expressions so let us see how we can derive the lambda expressions and how we can write functional interfaces in four steps okay so let us uh, see with one example so if you see this process file method okay uh, it is using try with resources and we are uh, defining a buffered reader and reading some file and then we are returning the for uh, line first line like one line of that file okay so this is the line which is doing the actual work okay if you see empty parameters and string as the output okay so what if i want to read more than one line like br dot uh, read line plus br dot read line what if i want to do this here okay so will i now write another method saying uh, process file and read two lines something like that or what if i want to uh, do something with that string so something with this string and return some string like uh, uh, trimming it or removing the special characters or whatever we might want to do so this is the actual uh, line which is doing the actual useful work so now let us see in four steps how we can convert this method and use lambda expressions uh, 
with behavior parameterization concept which we have learnt earlier. So in the first step, we identify the behavior parameterization as we saw. We saw that this is the uh, line that we want to uh, change as per the requirements, okay, as per the behavior. So once we have identified that, what we are going to do is we will write, create a functional interface and that functional interface, the return type needs to be that string itself and the parameter would be whatever we are doing here, okay. We are using a buffered reader to read the line. So we will be passing buffered reader as a parameter to this abstract method. So we have created a functional interface with this one abstract method. Return type is same as that of the method and we are processing the buffered reader like we need the buffered reader. So we are passing buffered reader as the parameter. Okay and then uh, how we are going to pass this to the process file method is now the process file method we will pass an instance of this buffered reader processor of this functional interface. Okay, so this is the second step. Now the third step is to executing that behavior, like how we will execute the behavior. So we have again the same try block where we are reading whatever file we want to read. And now instead of doing that one uh, behavior, we can send it, uh, we can call the process method of this functional interface and pass in this buffered reader. Okay. So this is executing that behavior and the last step would be actually calling this method with the help of lambda expression. So now first one if you see for buffered reader processor we are uh, sending a lambda expression which would be the implementation of this interface right implementation of that one abstract method of that functional interface. Okay, so this is the buffered reader input and br dot read line. So what is the process method here? Okay and its function descriptor is buffered uh, reader object and string output right. String output. So we are doing the same thing here but we are passing a buffered reader and some string output. So here we are just reading one line, here we are reading two lines or whatever process we want to do that would uh, return a string and follow this function descriptor. So in that way by just using this functional interface and lambda expression this one method could do, could execute many behaviors. Now let us see some functional interfaces which are already present in Java. So we have also discussed these functional interface in our uh, other videos uh, of Java 8 so you can go and have the, uh, a look at them to get more understanding. So right now we will just have a look at these functional interfaces. So we have these functional interfaces predicate, consumer, function, supplier and uh, some uh, operator related uh, function interface by predicate, by consumer and by function. So these are some functional interfaces which are already created for us which we can use if we want to use if those fit our requirements. So what about handling exceptions, okay the method uh, okay, whichever we have in the functional interface. So what if it throws some exceptions or what if uh, we want to throw some exceptions uh, from uh, our lambda expression. So functional interfaces. Uh, in Java do not allow checked exceptions, okay. So uh, the already existing functional interfaces in Java they do not throw uh, uh, allow any checked exception and if you want to use those functional interfaces and throw some exceptions then there are two options in which uh, you can do that. So the first one is to define our own functional interface like instead of using that functional interface we can write our own functional interface and then uh, uh, throw that exception from that functional interface or what we can do is use a try catch block. Okay, So if we are using the existing functional interfaces and if we want to handle the exceptions 
uh, we are not allowed to throw checked exceptions but if we still want to we can use try and catch blocks or uh, we can write our own functional interface with whatever exceptions which we want to throw and in that way we can handle exceptions so uh, this is well and good but how does the uh, compiler checks the type of the uh, lambda expression whatever we have written how is the type checking performed for a lambda expression so let us quickly go through that flow and understand how the type checking process happens so if you see here we have this lambda expression uh, we have a filter method so a filter will take uh, will use a predicate functional interface okay filter uses a pre predicate functional interface and we have seen that the descriptor for that one abstract method of predicate would be object and uh, boolean as the output okay so we are passing that here so so we are passing whatever is the uh, list of objects which we want to filter and then the predicate so we have given this uh, expression so uh, the first step which the compiler uh, does is in which context this lambda is used okay so first it will check for the definition of this filter method so the filter method it would take some uh, collection and then the predicate okay so now the uh, compiler knows that it is a predicate functional interface which it needs to refer okay so the target type is predicate okay which is bound to apple right which is bound to apple so here we know its list of apple so this is some predicate which is bound to apple so compiler knows that now it will look for the abstract method which is there in predicate right so now in predicate the abstract method is boolean test and apple so this is the abstract method the compiler knows that is there in the predicate functional interface and then it will derive the function descriptor which is nothing but apple and arrow and then boolean so now it will check whether whatever the lambda expression we have written here right so whether it is following the uh, apple boolean format right so if you see it's an apple and this is something that would return a boolean so this is the way how the compiler does the type checking for any lambda expression so it would check the definition of whatever uh, context we are uh, writing the lambda expression in whether it is a method parameter or a variable declaration and then it would check the uh, which is the target type which is a target functional interface okay and then it would look for that abstract method of that functional interface and then it will derive the function descriptor for that uh, abstract method and then based on the function descriptor now it will do the type checking whether the lambda expression follows that uh, type format or not so this is the major chunk for uh, expressing uh, for defining lambda expressions but uh, there are some rules which we can uh, have a look and get more understanding of lambda expressions so the first one is the void compatibility rule so now if you if you remember we have seen the first syntax of lambda expression wherein we have the uh, parameters the arrow and then the expression okay right so now this expression uh, it matches void return type or uh, whatever is the uh, return value which we are doing of the uh, any return of the function descriptor okay so uh, suppose uh, if you see predicate okay predicate returns a boolean so this is a valid one s dot add uh, so add would return a boolean if it is added successfully right and if you see consumer 
so consumer is having a void return type whatever the method consumer has it has a void return type so here we have written in the form of an expression this expression and though it uh, doesn't uh, uh, like it doesn't say it is void but still an expression can be used for a void return type in lambda expression okay so that is the void compatibility rule so an expression can be used not a statement an expression can be used to return to as void okay in the function descriptor the next uh, rule here would be type inference okay so as we have seen the compiler does the type checking and it already knows uh, the parameters of the lambda expression okay so uh, if you see this it already knows that it has to be an apple so you need not mention that apple here okay you need not mention the type of a as apple and also if you are you just have one parameter you don't even need this braces these are not needed so if you see a is simply written there are no uh, it's not written in brackets okay so as the compiler already knows the type you may skip uh, writing the type as well you can omit it so if you see here without uh, type with inference we have uh, mentioned the apple but we can also write it directly as a1 and a2 as compiler already knows it does the type checking it already knows that a1 and a2 should be of type uh, apple right and the third one would be restrictions on local variables uh, so a lambda expression can use local variables but those local variables need to be effectively final either they have to be final or if you are using them in lambda expression you should not be assigning any value to that variable later on in the code lambda expressions which use local variables are called capturing lambdas so if you see here port number so this lambda expression is using the local variable port number and then here we are again trying to assign some other value to this port number this is not valid and we will get a compile time exception i hope you like this video and you gain lot of insights into lambda expressions and functional interfaces and i'm sure now you will be able to write the best of uh, lambda expressions okay so if you like this video hit the like button press the bell icon to get the notification for the next videos uh, that would be on method references so stay tuned and have a great day bye